ingenuity, resourcefulness, a knack for spotting underexploited opportunities. We have mix, so our quantities run from 50 pieces to 40,000 pieces. These are some of the key traits that can help a job shop thrive, and which brother and sister team Mark and Nancy Rolfs have leveraged to build their plastics machining shop, East Coast Precision Manufacturing. But what does that mean in practical terms? Join us in this episode of View From My Shop as we take to the shop floor to find out. We worked for our father. We decided to go our separate ways. I was a machinist that had worked for him since I was 15 years old. In his shop, I did everything. I did quoting, I did machining. Uh, when we decided to go our separate ways, I had talked to Nancy, she had done some of the bookkeeping, and I said, would you like to go and I'm gonna start a business. I knew what machines I could buy. I purchased one of them. She said, okay, and so January 1st of 2006, we started our business. I had to learn how to develop a website. I had to learn how to get various forms of advertising for us so that we could start getting business in, which was most important. We knew how to make the parts, but we had to get the business to start making the parts. We started in our, my garage and basement, uh, just machining plastic parts. Uh, we had two employees back then, me and my brother-in-law. We've since grown to 10,000 square feet and 32 uh, CNC machines. We have Swiss, Swiss screw machines here. We have uh, machining centers down over there. We have some turning centers down in here, two axis lathes. Again, we just machine plastics. I think we found our niche, and Mark can talk about this, where we are working on hard to machine plastics. Yes, and um, expensive plastics. We have some uh, parts down here that are made out of Vespel. We have this little guy right here. It's very small. It's got a 5,000th hole in it. No burrs, has to be clean and clear. It's something we do uh, well. That's our niche is very small insulators for the semiconductor and medical uh, industries. Here's another grouping of parts that are coming off of this machine. You can see how clean there's no oils. We run a water-based coolant. We have measuring instruments right at the bench so that the machinist can do the measuring right at the bench. We found that Connecticut was a good place for us to start our business. It has a long history of manufacturing with Sikorsky and Electric Boat, General Dynamics. Connecticut has a very good system of technical high schools and community colleges that we can work with to get our employees and to hire young people to start learning the machine shop business here. New England in general provides a very good, um, a lot of our customers are other machine shops around New England uh, because they'll get, they'll get orders for they mostly machine metals, but then they might have one of their customers have a couple plastic parts that they need made. It's easier for them to subcontract it out. They don't have to change the coolant in their machines. They don't have to learn the specifics of machining plastic. Let me show you some other parts that we're making here. These are, this is one of our very small insulators that we're making right here. Can you see those in the cup? Now that looks like a round disc, but it's actually a round disc, but it has two tree pan counter bores in both sides. The tolerancing is very close, plus or minus five tenths on all things and measuring it, just measuring it is a very difficult thing. But we have techniques here uh, and we have skilled people that, and veterans that can do this uh, type of work. This is something we started um, at another shop in 2000 and we had struggled to uh, measure them and make them. It took uh, several years of development to get it. Uh, the other thing is catching this. In this machine it would be lost but we have special catching techniques and we can catch that part. This is a brand new building that Mark and I actually bought right before COVID hit. We thought we had made a huge mistake but it actually turned out to be good for us 
to be able to renovate during COVID. And unlike other, other shops, you're actually standing in our office right now. Uh, I'm the owner and I do the, um, all the quoting, I do uh, the machining, I do some of the programming, and I don't have an office. This is my office. My, my desk is right over here, right there, and one of my other employees that does some of the quoting, also his office is right here. So we're right on the floor and we're, we're in the trenches with them. So these are our machining centers here and um, we have them all lined up for we can run multiple machines. One person can run multiple machines and it's in a compact organized area. Uh, as you can see we have uh, uh, 15 robo drills in this in this small area. Nowadays you can buy a used machine. I bought a machine over there uh, for eight thousand dollars and I think I've gotten a million dollars or more of profit off of that. The return on investment is just incredible so machines are really cheap comparative and manufacturing has come so far that you can have outfit your place with a lot of machines you don't have to it's not like years ago where you had to it was so expensive you added on them very slowly so we buy a lot of used machines and we refer them and that worked out for us with the citizens that we found um, but most of our machines in here are uh, used and we've bought maybe six or seven or eight brand new. The reason why we would go with the brand new is we just happened to uh, get a job that we needed uh, a machine and it was going to be run long so we knew we would get the return on investment in a short order so we were able to we did it for that reason and then whether that job is still running or not one of I know one of our com customers is still going uh, on a brand new machine that we bought in 2008. Okay. And every once in a while we'll buy a brand new machine because there's not a used one available on the market when we need it. Yep, and then down here we have our um, turning centers. We have a few turning centers. This is where we do uh, parts complete off of the lathe. We have three turning centers right here. And a lot of times we can get the part to come off complete. Yeah, many, many parts that run in the two axis and then we go into a mill for a second op. We've, we've bundled it all together in our uh, turning centers so it comes off complete. It's more accurate. Uh, it's, a better, it's a better quality part all around. But these two parts, that's Ultem 1000. And you can see the nice finish from our polishing that we get on that. I don't know if my fingers are what you want, but, but uh, the part certainly. And then this one here is polycarbonate and we polished that one also. And you can see how sparkly it is. Customers love that. But medical customers need that so that whatever fluid that is running through it when they go to clean the part, when they go to clean the medical device, it is, it's cleaned easier. This is our can system which we do some of our inspection work. It gives us it's a vision system. It gives us the data. Uh, right now we have a little part set up on there, it's checking it and we're going through this bag probably and checking some dimensions. It gives all dimensions. Uh, on this particular part it works very well for the diameters. This is our um, shipping area and our deburring area and our polishing area. Kind of a separate area that we wanted to you can see that our shop is very open, but we wanted to put the walls here because our plastics, once they're complete and once we've washed, we have our, the wash cleaning station. Once we've washed them, we like to put them in the plastic bags. We didn't want any contaminants coming in from other parts of the shop. So this room is kept a little bit sealed off from the rest of the shop. Uh, my name is Lily Cummings. I work here at East Coast Precision. I kind of do a little bit of everything around here. Um, I do lathe, um, I also deburr, that's how I started out here. And I also work in the mill and I run the surface grinder preparing our material for the lathe. Um, pretty much daily I'll run about one to three machines every day. Um, I kind of jump around, a lot of these will run by themselves. We've got plenty of different cycle times. I learned everything I know on the job. I, like I said, never did any sort of machining. I used to work in manufacturing previously, but um, 
as our needs sort of shifted, I ended up over here in the lathe. Um, now I've learned how to set up, operate, and now I'm working on learning how to program. So there's lots of opportunities here, lots of different things to do. Um, always busy, always learning. I think it's important to note that it's a recruitment, and I've heard this for years, like what, what is the biggest problem? And they put out surveys, the big, what's the biggest problem? Getting people. Okay, uh, pe they, oh, wait, there's not enough people. I don't think for us it's hard enough getting people. It's, it's once you get them, to retain them is the important piece. There is, for the amount that our company has grown and the speed, we can get people. It's a matter of retaining them. So that's more the key piece. It, we work it from backwards. We don't need a flood of people and then have them come in and go right back out again. We need one good person once a year <laughs> that'll do it you know they you know or two good people and and that you have to be selective then you have to hold them at the and we try to do everything we can to make east coast a comfortable uh low stress working environment hey everybody brent donaldson with modern machine shop here and if you just watched that video and you're thinking boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.